This is Twit. I guess I'll go quick into the, the, the brief history of why a construction 3D printing company uh, has aspirations to work on the moon and, and eventually Mars. Um, I, I was not a a space nerd, as I call it uh, these days, as I've come to find out that's a, a reasonably well accepted term in the community. Um, and basically, you know, we the, the five or six engineers at the company at the time back in, I think, 2019, uh, were, were working away hard on a bunch of 3D printed concrete type problems. And our CEO, uh, who had just uh, finished his master's degree in space resources, sort of busted in and said, hey, we're going to do what we've done now on the moon. Um, and of course, I told him he was insane and that it was 100 times harder than anything we had been through. Um, and then I said, okay, well, how are we going to really approach this problem? Uh, and I got excited and I wanted to be, uh, to be involved because uh, I didn't know a whole lot about the space environment. Um, it was always, always felt like something other people did um, and that it wasn't tangible for somebody like me. And uh, so I started just, you know, basically offered my nights and weekends and, and a few other folks at the company sort of did the same. Uh, and we found a lot of interest with NASA who had actually been trying to 3D print with concrete um, for Mars specifically, or aimed at Mars, uh, and, and a bit, bit in the lunar world as well. And, uh, that sort of became project Olympus and, uh, I've been working on it for uh, about four years and just having an absolute blast. We, we were fortunate enough to get some funding from NASA to work on it and to build a, a relatively small, but highly, highly capable team. And, uh, we are trying to, uh, essentially build humanity's first home in another world. So, so just to sort of cue this up, I, I think I told you when I saw you, I had gone to a demonstration at Jet Propulsion Laboratory right about the time you guys started. I think it was 2017 of uh, an attempt they were doing at 3D printing off-world. And uh, I don't think they had done any, uh, any particularly sophisticated testing yet with different substrates and so forth, but they were using the athlete robot, which looks like a giant 20-foot high spider with a nozzle on the end of the arm to try and print. And it, the placement was very fairly accurate, although not as accurate as I think is what you're using now because it's just a big arm. But uh, you know they're still experimenting with the consistency of the of the of the mix and so forth. And it, uh, you know, not to be unkind because this was early on, but it was really kind of a disaster because the, the walls were leaning over and the stuff was extruding at different rates, and you had blobs and. It, it kind of looked like a bad frosting experiment of an eighth grader trying to do something. But that's, of course, where you start. But uh, again, I, I just in seeing both the construction across the street from your your offices and what you're doing in the lab, it's really uh, astonishing to me, especially now that you say it was sort of a an overtime effort, how far you've come. So I think one of the things that's one of the questions that's going to occur to our, our listeners and viewers pretty early on is how the heck do you do the soft world? So I assume on earth you're mixing that slurry with water. Is that right? Yes, correct. On earth. So what do you do on the moon where, I mean, there's water there, but it's kind of problematical using it for extruding, isn't it? Sure. Sure. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll show a prop because I get this sure. question quite often. So, um, essentially this is, this is what we use on earth. This is called lava crete. Um, it's a cementitious mortar. Um, essentially the difference between a concrete and the mortar is the size of the aggregate. Uh, probably certainly somebody would disagree with me on that simplified definition, but, um, this is, is what solidifies into what becomes the walls of our homes. Uh, and so this material we stack up and you're talking about controlling the viscosity, uh, mm. especially as you extrude it. So we've gotten pretty darn good at this, yeah. uh, and making sure because it's affected by temperature, it's affected by things like water to cement ratio, uh, all of those different things. So. Though there are ways to do lunar concrete, if you think about uh, the cement hydration process, it does require water. Uh, so when you put water in there and you're in the vacuum of space or the vacuum of the, the surface of the moon, essentially the same thing, uh, that's going to just sublimate off and give you all sorts of problems. So even though there are lunar derived concretes, they really require an overpressure situation that we just don't currently have. Mm -hmm. So I think lunar concretes are going to be incredible in the future. Uh, but right now, when we don't have these pressurized structures to build bricks in and things like that yet, I think we we, we started looking at other options. So early on, we, we sort of did a large literature review uh, and found out kind of what ideas had been studied, what levels of success that they had. 
We looked across cementitious, uh, microwave processing through thermal, uh, thermal energy, uh, laser directed deposition, uh, and, uh, molten extrusion as well. So, uh, essentially what we're trying to do to be clear though, is to, to live off the land. So for instance, this piece I showed, this is approximately, uh, five pounds, which would take something like, uh, a quarter, just call it a quarter million, uh, to get to the lunar surface. So we're, we're clearly not building human scale construction. Uh, with something quite that large. So what we do is we attempt to live off the land. Uh, we call it in situ resource utilization, or in this case, construction based in situ resource utilization. And so this is this is raw lunar regolith, right? I, I sort of joke that it's like crushed up coffee cups. So it's it's a bunch of ceramic material that's been bombarded by micrometeorites for billions of years. Uh, and what we do is we try to turn this into something that's structurally sound to build with. So we're not necessarily building sandcastles, but it's not that far off. And so what we've been able to do is to develop what we call laser VMX, which is uh, essentially a laser uh, directed energy deposition system that allows us, <clears throat> excuse me, allows us to uh, bring this material through a full melt cycle and re-solidify it into uh, something a lot like a concrete. It's not quite the same, but what we can do is turn the solar energy directly uh, collected on the surface of the moon, uh, put it through our system and use it to convert the raw amorphous powder here it's not really structurally sound into something that's actually uh quite an interesting building material so it's a little hard to work with at times uh but it is 100 isru which is something that we're very interested in for the future so you wouldn't have to take up a binder or anything with that it's simply done with heat yeah correct so it's it's entirely thermal uh thermal energy um and really the the hard part about that other than all the challenges of space robotics and, and the longevity on the lunar surface with all the challenges there um, is actually controlling that material and making sure you get favorable properties out of it. So that's something that we spent the last few years uh, trying to perfect. All yeah, right. You mentioned uh, there's some uh, challenges on um, just trying to print the materials up there. What other issues you're having there? Is there any advantages in terms of size there or lower gravity causing problems with print deposition or is it fairly standard, do you think? So the, the gravity situation, we don't build quite as free form as we would here. Um, and that, that has to do with the process and the material. So we're a lot more similar to, uh, if you're familiar with the additive manufacturing world, uh, selective laser centering or selective laser melt. So we're really building up substrates slowly on top of each other with supporting material on the sides. Um, and so the things like gravity are going to affect, of course, your robotics and the size of those robotics uh, and the payloads they can carry. But uh, but more specifically for us, it it actually affects the melt pool viscosity, uh, as well as our ability to uh, manipulate that lunar regolith. So you get a lot more lofting, for instance, and your angle of repose could be different the way it stacks up, essentially. So we're working on uh, experimentation and working on uh, better lunar simulants as well to better understand what it's going to be like when we actually have our robotic systems operating on the surface. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.